All right, we're back with CNS continuing coverage of CES 2015. I'm Donald Bell. This man is Jeff Bacalar, and welcome to CES Hello. in depth. We're going to recap the major announcements from today and even the minor announcements that we found interesting. Uh, today was the first official day of CES 2015. Let's jump right into it, Jeff. Let's get into it. Let's get into home security <laughs> systems. <laughs> I, I don't own a home. I know. Well, I, so you could you could protect your I hovel. I can secure my hovel box. Security. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, there was a, a bunch of home security cameras, like too many to list here. I just sure. kind of picked a, a few of the two of the more interesting ones. But really, like uh, this, I feel like CES today could have just been defined by all the home smart home technology that got this, shoved out the this, door. I feel like this is the first year where uh, home automation sort of stuff is, is permeating through that mainstream red tape, if you will. Yeah, last year, we, like every company kind of came out with their, their kit, their dev kit for the Google system or the Apple system or right. whatever it was that people were going to adopt to make all the smart stuff talk to the smart stuff. <laughs> exactly. To, to most people, that's just like, what? Right, whatever. But, once right. you see products, it starts to make a little Makes more sense. sense. Well, if nothing else, for $99, there is the Guardzilla coming out at Best Buy uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, it is a, has a cool name, first of all. It right? does. It is a security camera, has night vision. You can just plop it down, works over Wi-Fi. Uh, it works with iOS and Android to get a glimpse of what's going on in your home. I don't think there's any subs like subscription service involved in it. Right, it's good to go out of the box. I'm not thrilled with the resolution. It's like VGA resolution. It's, it's yeah. pretty bad. That's how they make it's, it cheap. It's like 2005 resolution, but uh, it's also not very subtle. Like, that's not a hidden camera. <laughs> right. well, that's that is they, clearly that's a camera. Exactly, it's like the right. fake home security box that you put out in front of your own. Right, right. All right. The next one is Canary. Now, Canary, we heard a lot about uh, last year. Uh, was, there's a big Indiegogo campaign for it. It got all, the, all their funds raised for it. But it is only now just shipping. It's a crowdfunding story we hear time and time again. <laughs> right. Remember last year we were really excited about this thing? Well, it's shipping now. <laughs> $199. You get 720p video quality, uh, wide-angle camera. It can even sense like temperature changes and moisture in your home. It's, it's a lot least, smarter and, and cooler And at least looking. the canary doesn't look like a camera. <laughs> right. Right, like it looks like a beverage warmer. Baby monitor. Sure, it, it looks it looks cool. Absolutely, you'd have no idea. Uh, another thing that I like that's in that home, that smart home sphere, was the Schlage. Schlage? Schlage? Isn't it Schlage? It could. Could be. I think Schlage. It's, I think it's, it's Schlage. No, there's no there's no accents on any of these. Um, no. Okay, <laughs> you're reading into it. <laughs> the Schlage sense. It is uh, one of the first ho Apple Home Kit compliant. Um, items we're seeing out yet that's going to be an iOS controlled deadbolt for your right. home. So you can say, hey Siri, unlock my door and Siri will hopefully do that or look it up for you on the hopefully. web. Hopefully. <laughs> but it's cool to actually finally see something coming out from that SDK yeah. that seemed to generate less than a lukewarm reception. So now you can trust Apple with your deadbolt. Well, you're already doing it with your credit cards and your life and Why everything not? else. Why not let them have the keys to your yeah. freaking house? <laughs> Uh, the only hitch on this one is this Bluetooth only, so the range on it, you've got to be pretty close to your door. It's not, gonna, it's, See, if, it's not the, the deadbolt that you'd have to rent out your home on uh, Airbnb or something. Right, where exactly. You could be in Mexico and say, yeah, sure, go but, into my house. But isn't there something, like Bluetooth kind of works 30 to 50 feet, right? Yeah. That's far away from my front door. I, know, but I don't uh, want that unlocking a lot of these, at the A mailbox. lot of these are sold to like, the people who want to just have remote access to unlock their door for renting out their home to other people. Right. That's That's part of the market there. There is something exciting about leaving the house and sort of just doing the remote beep yeah, like you would your car, like boop, boop, yeah. and that's your house. I'm into that. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, that covers uh, home security stuff that I found interesting today that a lot of our editors found. Uh, wearables, let's also talk wearables. Again, there were uh, many, many, many wearables that got pushed out today. <laughs> I didn't see too many that I was that I think, interested in. I think 30,000 products <laughs> launched today. Right. You but can buy any of these 30,000. In the wearables sphere, it felt like a lot of Fitbit clones sure. got shown off today. Uh, but there was the Martian Guest Connect smartwatch. Now, Martian, we've seen a, a couple of their smartwatches before. Scott Stein's been a fan of them. They are big and chunky, but they look beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're bit, you know, <laughs> chunky is a very good adjective. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, you know, they resemble the most sort of traditional 
wristwatch yeah. that you're, you know, with, with a hand and minute, hour, you know, sort of, yeah. Minute what, and hour hand. What's right. smart about them is a very kind of... It's just a fine little screen, screen down yeah. the bottom. Right. But they can connect over Bluetooth to your phone. They can do a lot of the same capabilities you'd, you'd look for in... Uh, yeah and a high-end smartwatch, but they, you just, they keep, keeps it classy. So what, is there something special about the Guest Connect, or is it just the next one? It's the next one, it can act as a remote shutter for your camera, right? if you want it to. I, okay. <laughs> that's one thing that no, got shown like, off. No, that's good, because there's always like one instance where you'd need that, where you just right. have your camera on the tripod, right. and you're over here, and you're like, oh, that's going to work right. out. It's a good, good little spy thing, sure, too, right? I you think so. You've got the phone over off on the side, and then you're talking to, you know, Dr. No, and you're secretly taking photos. Is that like a, what kind of reference is that? Above a shark tank. Oh. It's a James Bond reference. It's a James Bond yeah. reference? All right. Sorry, man. Whatever, man. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's not hockey. No, I, I know. I only understand <laughs> hockey. It's nice to see them expanding their horizons with a whole sort of new palette of, of design choices and yeah. stuff. They only had like one or two, I think, before. And uh, hey, they've got enough money to make more. So I don't know this for sure, but I have to suspect that this is one of those smart watches that's going to last a little bit longer on a charge because sure. there's less screen to have to power, right? right? Instead Absolutely. of the all-screen giant watches that seem to last about a day. Sure, sure. All right, now speaking of wearables, for the first time this year, CES has expanded a lot and taken over the entire Sands Expo Center across town, known this week as Tech West. Pew, pew. We've got our own Sharon it's, Propus. That's like your Yosemite Sam. Tech, Tech West. I'm sorry. I haven't been there. I just I pictured there's sawdust on the ground. Tech West is a flea market. <laughs> that's what it is. It's like the flea hey market guys, of CES. I'm over here live at Tech West where the, the show floor is full of entrepreneurs who are hungry get, to get attention about their new products. We have everything from wearables to robotics to 3D printing. And the show is such a big deal over here this year that CNET, of course, had to be a part of it. We have our own booth at Tech West. It's petite, but it's got a lot of manpower. The point of it is that entrepreneurs can come through, pitch their product, and then we can decide whether or not they're worthy of getting a little bit of attention on CNET. So behind me, Lexi is showing a smart Wi-Fi connected thermostat that's only $49. So it's innovations like this that we want to show off here at TechWest. Small companies, emerging technologies worthy of some attention. One of the companies that I was super impressed with this year is called Toby. Toby isn't new, but they have some of the most accomplished eye tracking technology. They're working to build it into gaming, but they're also working to build it into computers so that every laptop has this eye tracking technology built into it for gaming, for even doing things like opening folders. All you have to do is stare at the folder, and a couple seconds later, it'll open. So, is, are you playing a game? Okay, this guy just finished calibrating his eyes. So now what they're going to do is launch a game, and he's going to be able to control it entirely with his eyes. When you're doing this, it actually feels a little bit like mind control, because, so, as you can see, he needs to get the targets, the red dots are good, the X's are bad, and here we go. Let's turn around, Charlie, this guy's got it going. Look, he's just standing there. It's insane. So he's just looking at the screen, and the tracking technology is so fast, so accurate, and this game is a really good example of it. What do you think? It's cool, yeah. yeah. It's cool, it's whatever, it's whatever, it's just awesome technology. Okay guys, stay tuned, we'll be back with more CES In Depth after a very quick break. All right, welcome back to CES In Depth. Let's get right to today's news. Now, one other treat I saw today came from Dome No, our, our senior editor for all networking data storage technology. He got a hands-on look at USB Type-C, or USB 3.1, and it's a, it's a new connection standard that works a lot like a lightning cable, where it's, it can work both ways. USB can finally be flipped oh, around. Upside down. Yeah. yeah, no matter what, you're not having to plug it in the wrong way first and then 
plug it in the right that way. Took to say, yeah. That took a while. So that took a we, long got time. It now. And uh, the best part is that you've got better connection speed. So it's, uh, what is it, 10? I believe it's 10. 10 gigabits per, per second. second. So Twice the speed of what we can currently get. So, uh, it, but does it look like it? it it's got to be like a hybrid-y sort of looking USB thing, right? Like in terms of like what the interface it, itself looks like. It just sort of, it doesn't matter. It just like slides into one or the yeah, other, it's right? This, it's this slipping, it's this kind of universal little connector here. Yeah. It really looks a lot like the inversion of a lightning connector. Like it still is right, USB right. It, in it the sense. It surround it somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not just like a card you slip in. Right, right, right. right. So uh, MSI is already committed to making a laptop, a gaming laptop with a, with USB Type C coming up. I feel up. like 3.0 has barely had its day yet. You know, you're, in, you're living in the past. Jeff. I get. I guess 3.1 so. is the future. This is a big deal to me. I, I do a lot of transferring. Yeah. With between. But now it's going to be faster. I the, guess the, so. The takeaway here is faster USB. Uh, what I understand is I think it's confusing to to the general sort of public. Mm -hmm. Once you change what USB looks like, especially with the fact that 3.0 is compatible, has a whole legacy compatibility thing, when you pipe in 3.1, then it, it changes everything. I, I know it's a weird thing to be upset about. This could just be maybe the mobile connection standard for it, just okay. like, a, like a USB, you know, micro USB standard. But All right. it's ex I'm excited for USB to finally be able to flip around, do some gymnastics. It's it no longer will you, oh, it, and you never get it right on the first shot. <laughs> of course. It's always, oh. You would think your best cast and it's always wrong. And they even, sometimes some of them have like little dots on them to right. feel your way they're around. And they're, but it no. doesn't work. No. Doesn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> We have, right. we have real problems. In the, uh, in the PC world, we also saw the Dell XPS 13, an $800 Windows machine that uh, we're very excited about. It looks like it's a solid machine. It's a pretty impressive machine. It's got a 3200 by 1800 quad HD display, which, I mean, kind of seems wasted on a 13-inch screen. Nevertheless, it's what they claim to be the smallest 13-inch laptop ever. 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 Not these Not these. Guys. No. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that pans out. Um, but yeah, it looks super thin, and uh, you know, I've played all around with a lot of XPS machines. They're really solidly built, and we'll see how it uh, pans out. All right. You also put in here the Razer Forge TV. Right. This uh, is a harder one, I feel, to describe, but this is This is tough because it, it's, it's sort of, uh, there, there's many different sort of branches to this. Uh, they have a micro console that will go for a hundred dollars. And the greatest thing, first off, the fact that Razer's actually going to release a, like teasing a product that's going to come out. No, you knock on wood all you want. This thing is coming out. Right. They've sworn up and down to us. Uh, it's going to be an Android micro console. Uh, obviously, it's going to come in around the size of a, I guess, what is that, like an Apple, Apple TV TV's. sort of size. Uh, you can hook up a wireless uh, Razer uh, controller to it, play Android games. But then they're sort of entering the uh, idea of streaming PC gaming through uh, a, a streaming service that will not really limit itself to something like only from out of Steam or like what NVIDIA has been doing with their Shield stuff. This is going to play nicely with any kind of game that you might be playing on your PC. So if you're playing it on Origin or, or through Steam or whatever it so is. So the console is in your home. Right. I mean, are the, the gaming PCs in your home. Right. But maybe in a different room and you want to get sure. to your TV? That's sort of what it sounds like they're going after. Okay. Yeah. I, again, it's tough. I've played around with the Shield a lot, the NVIDIA Shield, and it just, something doesn't feel 100% right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, again, you're play shifting stuff. It's, the latency is a big issue, so we'll have to see. Uh, how this goes, you're going to need a pretty dope router yeah. <laughs> to, to make it play because nice. Because the, the gaming, the Android gaming alone hasn't been able to take off, I feel like, with the, no, it's, the it's, Ouya and the other systems we've seen. It just, right, no one remembers that thing, and there's really not uh, too many games. There's a few here and there, a couple of diamonds in the rough, but Android gaming as a platform, when it, opposed to PC stuff and console stuff, it's just not there yet. All right. yeah. uh, we also saw some, some silly phones, or maybe amazing to somebody. I mean, the, the greatest phone so far at CES has been like that LG G Flex 2, right? Yeah, people like are psyched. Like a real about flagship that. phone, yeah. which is a rare sight at CES. Then there's the other phones. The Lamborghini 88 Tori. Tori, yeah. That's her. A $6,000 Android phone wrapped in leather, emblazoned with the Lamborghini logo. What, what, you're not going to get one? Probably not for me. And, and apparently it's not even that well-specced. Like, uh, it's, it's running like KitKat, 
<laughs> it's not the fastest processor around. It breaks down a lot on the side of the road. Yeah, but if you are really into having flashy, overpriced things, this is like, now what I, at the like, top of your the list. Who's the flashy guy that's like, I want a really high-end, old Android Lamborghini branded phone. Well, this I, is weird. Uh, it's got to be the Lamborghini collectors. I can't imagine you're, you're buying this phone if you've you know, got a VW Golf that you're driving around. No, no. It's a way outdated version of KitKat, but it's six grand. So if you're spending six grand on a phone, you don't care about which version of Android's <laughs> popping on that thing. But uh, going on the same vein of, of brand power, we also saw the Kodak IM5, a 249 smartphone geared towards seniors, really bare bones, bone specs. There's so many jokes to make. I know. It's like it's like a, it uses film, <laughs> right? It doesn't use film. It doesn't use film. No, you don't have to develop you anything. You have to wind it after each photo. No, but it apparently has like a back door where like tech support can, can take over your phone and actually troubleshoot any problems you might have with it. This is what the jitterbug wished it could have been. It does have like a quick button for ordering prints from the fo photos <laughs> you take. It really, it really does. <laughs> so there's an integrated print delivery solution for taking the photos on your phone and then not knowing what to do it's with them. It's just a button that calls your button. grandson and <laughs> he picks over. you up and brings you to Dwayne Reed yeah. and, that, and that's how that works. It could be, but it exists. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that about does it. Those are the, uh, the highlights of the best tech our editors have uncovered today, day one of CES 2015. But let's not forget about all the press day announcements from yesterday. So if you're just jumping into our CES coverage, there's a lot more over at ces.cnet.com, including yesterday's in-depth wrap-up. Plus, that could be, is this plus? We're plus. We're plus. Okay. Plus, <laughs> tune in tomorrow and all this week for our continuing coverage, our hands-on videos, our interviews, much more. I think Jeff here even has some beer to drink, some beer tech I'm going to get drunk on stage tomorrow, That's so come and see that. Check that out. Come and see that. Which is not to say we're not drunk right now, right? Very drunk. <laughs> and then Nick Cannon is stopping by on... Uh, oh, tomorrow, yep. on Thursday, this goes on all week, we have Stern Pinball coming over to the stage. We'll put a bow on CES with the final word, running all the best tech trends that we put on, we've seen here, that have been put on display at CES 2015. It's another exhausting day, but we're signing off. We made it. We made it. Day one, CES 2015. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. <laughs>